My title of the message today is called The River. And if you already don't know this, you are already in the river and you are already getting a soaking of the water and the Holy Spirit of God this morning. His presence is here this morning. My name is Conrad Francis. I pastor Living Way Church, a four square church in Bellflower, California. Yeah, I don't know if you brought your Bibles, but I'm not going to read the whole passage today, but it's in Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47 talks about when he, when God, it says over here in the scriptures, and let me go to that first passage. He said, Ezekiel, so I had a vision. And the first verse, it says, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple in the vision. And he said, I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing right of the altars on the south side. The altars. The altars is where we come to. It always begins from the altars. Yes. So this morning I want to talk to you what Ezekiel, what God downloads to Ezekiel. Four things, four things that God exposes, God downloads to the prophet Ezekiel. One is the source of the river. What is the source of the river? The first thing you have to really realize and recognize in your life that God is your source. Amen. Yes. Yes. Not your PhDs, not your MBAs or your educations, yes. and all that is good, but God is the one who gives you the strength and the ability, the wisdom, the understanding to move forward, to do his work. Yes. God reveals to Ezekiel that the river must be the primary source. Mm. Which is what? The very altars, the very throne room of God is where the river begins to flow right from there. It says to Ezekiel in ESV version, it says, then he brought me back to the door of the temple. What's that mean? The entrance back to the door. Some of us have been away from the entrance of the temple. We need to come back. It's just like he's saying, to give us this picture of the Holy Spirit flowing through the temple of God and he begins to saturate and permeate your life in every direction. We cannot. We call this conference, Deeper Life Conference. How deep? My question to how deep do you want to go? How deep do you want to go? Because let me tell you something. In, in Ezekiel, he's saying over here, he brings you back to the door. In the presence of God, in his presence. And it's from there it begins that your life goes deeper. And I'm not saying that some of you are not deep enough. But it's always from glory to glory. Amen. Yes. From faith to faith. Yes. Amen. You never stay at the same level. Yes. yes. God takes you higher and higher. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. And I think as you look at the scripture, what you find is that his temple and his presence are inseparable. Come on. Let me say that again. His temple and his presence are inseparable. Yes. Which means you and I and his presence, come on, come on. Hallelujah. is inseparable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's inseparable. Yes. You got to be in his presence. Mm. You got to experience God in every factor of your life. Many of us, too many of us as Christians, and I'll be the first one to tell you, many times we walk away from the entrance of the door of the temple and we forget that our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when he comes and he resides in us, his presence is with us. And in his presence, there's fullness, fullness of joy. Yes. Everything that he has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the source of the river, number two, 
the size of the river. What is the size of the river? Bible says in verses 3 to 5 that he was going eastward and measuring a, line in, a measuring line in his hand. The man measured 1,000 cubics. And then he led me through the waters and it was ankle deep. Then again he measured 1,000 cubics and he led me through the waters and it was knee deep. Then he led me again 1,000 meters to the cubics and then he led me through the waters and it was waist deep. And again, verse 5, he measured a thousand cubics and it was a river that I could not pass. For the water had risen. Let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you are supposed to float and go with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Many of you may have read the story and heard the story of Papa Mel where the power of the Holy Spirit fell in that Presbyterian church years ago and the wind of the Holy Spirit swept that place. When it happens, you're supposed to be transformed. You cannot yes. and not able to. It's not, you cannot separate yes. your body from the presence of God. You yes. cannot separate yourself from the presence of God. Yes. You you go with the wind and the flow of the yes. Holy Spirit. I believe God is showing Ezekiel and is prophesying to you today, just like to, he did to Ezekiel, that you and me are never intended, mm. come on church, yes. we are never intended to be ankle deep. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. As a baby Christian, yeah. I understand being ankle deep, but you begin to go deeper. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I have experience, first-hand experience in Sri Lanka. Ankle deep is not fun. (laughs) If you don't know how to swim, which I don't, because I never grew up near the beach, you go out there and you just put your feet in the water and you just feel the water. Mm. And that's okay because you're just doing it. But ankle deep, when you go through a creek, when you go through a river, what he's talking about a river is usually the most dangerous time. Why? Because there are rocks. There are slippery rocks. And it's not enough time for you to catch yourself. You may slip. You may fall. And that's the time. Is the most time for injury to take place. I experienced that firsthand. In the same way, God never intended us to be ankle deep. But he also said that we need to go further, not only knee deep, not even waist deep. We are to go deeper. Deeper life conference causes you and is calling you to a deeper relationship with God that you have never experienced before, that you are going to walk out of this place Never the same as you Amen. came in. Yes. And after this conference, you're going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And he said, I am going to cover everything in your life. Amen. There is nothing that you will lack this morning. Amen. Amen. Nothing. Because it's when you are fully submerged yourself in the river, it's where you will find your joy. Yes. Find your strength. Yes. Find your anointing. Yes. And the adventure of the kingdom of God that God and the Holy Spirit is taking you is to the fullness. Yes. To the fullness. It's where you are completely floating in the will of God. Many people, as as I go around different nations, I've traveled quite a bit in Asia and Australia and New Zealand doing discipleship programs from the church that I used to be a part of many years ago. And people always come up as pastors. They all say, Pastor, please pray for the will of God in my life. The will of God is right there. It's to be floating in the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times we say, okay, what is the will of God in my life? And I tell them, it's like, lay your life down as a living sacrifice. Upon the altars of God. 
I thank God that I don't have to bring sacrifices of goats and animals and pigeons and doves yes. to the altars. It'll be such a bloody scene, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it's all bunch of blood, smelly. Yeah. But God, Jesus Christ, thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. He created an opening for us yes. to walk right into his presence. Yes. Come on. yes. Into the presence of God. Amen. 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 He wants you this morning to take a float. Take a float with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, say that with me. I am going to just take a float for Jesus this morning. I am going, going to, to take, take a float, float for this, Jesus this, this morning. Just say it really, that you really mean it from deeper. I am going to take a float for Jesus today. I am going, going to take, take a float for, for Jesus, Jesus today. God wasn't just interested in our ankle deep for believers. Yes. He wasn't saying to Ezekiel, I want you to just go in and tip your toes in the water. What he was saying to him was, I want you to get soaking wet. Soaking wet deep into the waters. Because when you get deep in the water, see, because like, here's one thing. When you're ankle deep, Right? The water's there. You still have control. Mm. Yes. You can stand. Yes. You can walk. Yes. You may slip. Oh, I'll catch myself. Mm. Yeah. True. What happens when it goes knee deep? You can still yes. push through the waters. The ripples might come by. Mm. Waist deep. Whoa, you're a little bit. A <laughs> little bit shaky, yeah. right? Because mm. the waist yes. pushes you. But what happens when you when Ezekiel says, I got so far, there was a river that I could not pass. Mm. It's right there when God begins to do a work in you. Because let me tell you something. You have no control now. Come on. You have no control now. Yes. It's only the Holy Spirit that is taking you with the and floating you and taking you to your destination and fulfilling everything in your life mm -hmm. when it is complete surrender. Yes. Complete surrender. So what is the size of your river? The size of your river, if you want to get this, listen up. Size of the river determines the size of your surrender. How much you surrender is going to determine the size of the river. Come on. The moment you let go and you have no control, he's going to do much more with you. Yes. Amen? Amen. So this is what God is trying to help us understand. He did that with Ezekiel. What is it that you're holding on to this morning? What is it that you are unwilling to give up? Let me tell you something. Many of us as Christians, we say, yes, Lord, I surrender all. But she's not Lord. Just, just don't come into this area, please. <laughs> you know, let me just have control of this area. What he's saying is, is I surrender everything. Amen? Yes, everything. Amen. amen. What are you willing to give up? What is it that you got between, in your hands, between your fingers this morning? Does it mean you have to give up your friends? Or areas in your life that you say, like, oh God, what is all this? I got to give it up. No, what he's saying is, says, let me, give me an opportunity. Let me have a little bit of a touch in your life and see what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So it's the source of the river, the size of the river, the sufficiency of the river. What's his sufficiency? So he helps us understand all of this. His source that is unlimitless. It's just full. Yes. Verse, verses, uh, chapter 47, verses 6 to 8. And then he again 
he begins to talk about the sufficiency in verse 6. He asked me, have you been watching son of man? Have you been watching son of man? Then he led me back along the river. The ESV says, son of man, have you seen this? Have you seen this? What are your eyes focused on this morning? What is it that you're focused on? I believe many of us focus on the circumstances around us. And that's why we can't have a deeper life. But when we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we allow him to take us further. And like he says over here, son of man, have you seen this? Have you ever read this passage and seen this before? And I, when I cried when I, when I saw this, because he took him to the river and he began to show him the river. And Ezekiel was so focused on the waters rising around that when he brought him back in verse 6, he asked him, what do you see? What do you see? And it's interesting. It says over here, the verse 6, what do you see? Then he led me back to the, along the river. Ezekiel was fully drenched right now because he was floating in the water. He's complete. He was soaked from head to toe. And he's asked Ezekiel, what do you see? He allowed them to come back to the river bank. I want you to see this again. God always shows you at a point in time, sometimes what he wants to do in your life. But we tend to forget and not focus on the presence of God and his anointing, his calling upon your lives. His, his, his work upon your lives. We look at the circumstances around us and we say, God, it's not going to happen. Because I, I can't see how it's going to happen. You know, I went to school, but, but it's not happening in the way I, I want it to work. But he wants you to see again what he wants to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Remember, the first time he saw the water flowing, from underneath the door, threshold, and from the throne room of God, all around, from the east and the west and the north and the south, mm -hmm. the water began to flow. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you see, he says in verses 7 and 8. The Ezekiel's response is, when I returned, when I returned, I'm reading New Living Translation. He says, I was surprised. When you're in the presence of God, why would you be surprised? One. You've been asking. You're, you're, you're in his presence, right? It's like, I was surprised by the sight of very, very many trees growing on both sides of the river. Mm. So were those trees there before? No, he was so focused on the water rising. But when he brought him back, he saw the side, he saw trees, many, many, many trees. Verse 8, then he said to me, the river flows east through the desert into the Arabah. What's Arabah? The valley of the Dead Sea. The ESV translation says, and goes down into the Arabah, which means desolate, dry areas. When you, the size, the source of the river, the size of the river, the sufficiency of the river, when you allow that to penetrate into your life, everything that is dry, Come on. everything that is dead, mm. Bible says over here, the waters will become fresh. Amen. 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 Fresh. Amen. The water of the stream, in verse 8, it says, be will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh yes, yes. and pure. Amen. Fresh and pure. Now you are in the deep, deep with the Holy Spirit. Well, I know what I see. 
I see right now men and women that have said on this day and a holiday that I could be taking a trip to Goa, right? <laughs> and having a time on the beach. No, I'm coming to Deeper Life Conference. I'm coming to Deeper Life Conference because God has something for me and he's going to take me to a new level and it's going to be a fresh, pure experience. And he said, I will do what I have promised to do in your life. Amen. 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 What is it that you see? What do you want when you come to the Lord? Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, this morning, just like the Lord says to Ezekiel, and church, hear me out, it's when the presence of God and the power and the river of the Holy Spirit is flowing in and through you. And he said to Ezekiel, he's saying that the life of fruitfulness is available yes. for you today. It's available for you. Whatever you're doing, you are supposed to experience great fruitfulness. Amen. Everything that the Holy Spirit has given to you today. If the river is in you, listen to me. If the river is in you, you, whatever you've touched by the river and the river of the Holy Spirit, everything in front of you will bear fruit. Amen. Because when Amen. he came back, Ezekiel was brought back to the river banks. What did he see? He saw trees mm. that were green and were bearing fruit. Yes. Amen. Many people say in my church that when I ask them, you know, I talk to them. You know, Christians do this a lot, right? Mm. You tell them something, it's like, stop judging me. <laughs> don't judge me. You're not supposed to judge, right? Yes. Okay. I don't know. I'm just taking a walk in the orchard today. And I'm just inspecting the fruit. Get it? Yes. yes. I'm just expecting the fruit. I'm not judging you. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Because when you're with the power of the Holy Spirit, mm. you'll bear good fruit. Yes. Amen. Yes. So I'm a fruit inspector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fruit inspector. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Shout glory to God. Glory because to he God. said you will bear fruit. You will bear much fruit. Amen. You will bear great fruit. Amen. Amen. Your ministry will bear great fruit. Amen. Your church will bear great fruit. Amen. Your family and your kids will bear great fruit. Amen. Amen. His mighty river, that is what is going to cause you when you come back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're here today and you're feeling lack. You've been just trying to get by. With all the chaos outside. It was beautiful this morning. It should be a holiday every day, Pastor Prem. <laughs> there was no traffic. We were just lailing. And the driver was actually taking his time to get here. I was like, wow, beautiful. Right? And we're trying to get by. You're just trying to figure out how to hold this thing together in your life. And if it is you this morning, I want to say this morning to you, and I prophesied to you this morning that there is fruitfulness for you today. Amen. Amen. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, and I wrote this down to your spirit, that there is fruitfulness in your spirit. Amen. And the life, if you would just allow the river to flow in front of you, and around you and get wet in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be great fruitfulness for you this Amen. morning. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's like getting CPR. Mm -hmm. Some of us might need CPR at times. But if God said it, he will do it. I believe it. Yes. And what happens? That settles it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right? The yes. psalmist writes, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Amen. See, it's settled in heaven. There's no mm. problem there. Mm. Its problem is here. 
Yes. Yeah. The problem is here with us. Yeah. And if his word is really, his word is true. If no weapon formed against you will prosper, then that's what it means. Yes. That even before you dash your foot against a stone, I will give angels charge over you. Then that means that he, it is true. Yes. With my right hand, I will uplift you up out of the mighty clay. Then he's going to do that for you. Yes. But that only comes when you surrender. The size of your river is there will be the size of your surrender. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The last one. The saving power of the Holy of the river. The saving power, verses 9 to 12. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea all the way from en Engadi to this place. <laughs> the shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fishermen, fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea just as they fill the Mediterranean. But the marshes and swamps will not be purified, and they will be salty. Verse 12. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown or fall, and there will always be fruit on the branches. There will be new crops for every month, and they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be good fruit, and the leaves for healing. Amen. 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 You gotta get excited for this. I love this verse Amen. because when you're in the river, so I can't, I can't just see as Christians and believers. When we want to be, have a deeper life and just say, God, I'm just getting by. When we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. When we have the authority of God's word yes. to speak and declare. We sang that song this morning, Yahweh will manifest himself. Truly he will manifest yes. himself. Amen. Amen. Truly he will manifest Amen. himself. It's just Amen. like, I love the worship this morning. Amazing worship this morning. Is that's what happens when you get immersed into the very presence of God. His presence has a purpose, church. Yes. His presence has a purpose in your life. Yes. It is to know him and to make him known. known. Come on. Amen. It's to know him and to make, make him, him known. known. Papa Mel talked about it yesterday that India will be evangelized. And you have the mission yes. that God has commissioned Amen. that each yes. one of Amen. you have. It is not just for Pastor Prem or the evangelists that come yes. or certain pastors and leaders. It is for everyone to do this. Yes. Amen. Amen. But what God has done in your life is for you to testify of his goodness and express it to others so that they may experience this. Amen. It's not just for you. This year in the river. Because when you come back, you're soaking wet mm. in the move of God. That's upon your life. Amen? Amen. He said that there are fish, many fish in the river. Fishermen standing on the banks of the river. Ezekiel, when he came back, saw fishermen standing on the banks. And he saw many Word says many kinds of fish, Gujaratis, Punjabis, yes. Telugus, yes. Kanadigas, Hindi, I don't know, all of them. But many fish. You are fishermen. Amen. Yes, amen. And he's calling you today to be soaked in the river of his Holy Spirit and his presence that you may fish them out. Amen. Could it be 
that it could have been a prophetic word at the time for Ezekiel, but could it be for us today? Yes. 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 That God is saying that you are the fisherman and the Ooh, mission that God has glory. called you yeah. and placed you so that you can see 1.46 billion people. When I drive through the streets, they're lost. Even though they may know where they're going, they're trying to, in their natural, navigate through traffic and navigate their lives, stressful lives, from point A to point B. How much more their spiritual lives that they're trying to navigate, as Papa Mel was talking about, they're scrambling up the mountain to see Jesus. He's calling each one of us today. Amen. 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 I want to share with you a prophetic thought that there will be many fish. Everything will live where the river goes. Yes. Amen. Hello. Yes. Everything will live yes. where the river goes. There will be fishermen that are standing by the side of the sea. And it's fish with many kinds. And you go with the river, whether it is to fill petrol at the petrol station, mm. whether it is to buy groceries, whether it is workplace. Some of you may be in a workplace and they say, God, I need to get out of this place because it's not Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be that the Lord placed you in that place? Come on. That your light may shine. Come on. Yes. Because the Bible says you are the salt of, of this world. world. Yes. And wherever the water flows and the salt goes, you will be fresh and pure. You'll purify. Amen. Amen. You have that in you. Amen. Amen. And this morning he is saying to you this morning, I will do that. Amen. I will accomplish Amen. that in your lives. I will Come bring on. that. On, We're living in it. Yes. Ooh. We're living in a yes. season and a time Ooh. of Hallelujah. God's. I, I, I thank God that I was not living back in the 1800s. It is great. There were many evangelists, many things. But such a time as this yes. that he has placed you in the season, in this place, in Hyderabad, in India, wherever you're from, in Chennai, Kerala, whatever place he's placed you, could it be a season and time that he's placed you right now? And he says, you will carry my spirit mm -hmm. and flow with it that others may benefit from it. Mm -hmm. That will experience my power. Mm -hmm. That you will bring healing. Mm -hmm. You bring healing to them. Amen? Amen. Healing in their bodies. Healing in their lives. The church keeps waiting for a revival, an awakening, or a movement to take place. And he says, actually, you're standing on the banks of the river. Revival is at your hands. And I just love it because he has given us the opportunity that we are on a brink at the times, the end times are so close to Jesus' return. But I want to be, I want to be sold out for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to be claiming lies for Jesus. I want to be grabbing them. There was an evangelist that many, many years ago, when I was 19 years old in New Zealand, he was preaching one day. He says, I want to be a man that is when the Jesus is returning and the clouds open up and he's coming uh, and I'm zipping through the air. He says, I want to grab a sinner in my right hand and left hand and I want to be zipping through the clouds and I tell these sinners, do you accept Jesus or do I let go? <laughs> <laughs> Doing something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalms 126b. With arms, loads of blessings, bringing in the sheaves. A season of movement, a season, a deeper life with God, you will be bringing arm loads Amen. of people into the kingdom Amen. of God. 
That is God's command. That is his wish. That is his will. That is his plan. So how do we, how wet do you want to get? Mm. A lot of us, we don't like getting wet. It's messy. It's sticky. Or should I ask, how wet are you? The worship team can come up for a minute. As I close this morning, I want to give you an opportunity. And I don't know where each one of you are this morning. Is it God is my feet, just ankle deep, my legs, or knee deep? Or did I just get a splash of water? Or am I soaking wet? Am I fully wet in your presence? I want to give you an opportunity this morning to say, God, I want, I want all of it. I want to be soaking wet. I, want to, I don't want to feel the ground because I trust you. I want to be floating with you wherever the Holy Spirit is taking me. That you are in control. And I have no, nothing to worry about. No anxiety, no anxiousness, but just the peace of God. All control belongs to the Holy Spirit in my life. And I'm just taking a float for Jesus. That wherever you take me, there will be life. That wherever I go, the water brings life and sustenance. Not only in my life, but to my family. My co-workers, friends, strangers, you have that opportunity. In you. This morning as you're calling upon the name of the Lord and saying, God, you are such a good, you are so, so good, you're a holy God. If I would ask you, doesn't matter if you want to come to the front, you may come to the front and make a surrender to the Lord. But I just feel this morning and I sense that God wants to do something in your lives and it's at that point of complete surrender wherever you may be, whether you want to be in the, in the, in the pews, you want to kneel before Him, you want to lift your hands, whatever it is. I believe that there are some of you this morning that just have to say, God, I am completely the size of the river. The sufficiency of the river is going to be the size of your surrender Amen. this morning. What is the size of your surrender this morning? How much are you willing to give up? Give it all to Jesus. Amen. Jesus, come into my life completely. Permeate my life. Bring the mighty river again in my life. Bring the mighty river again in my life. Let it flow in me. Let it flow through me. Let it flow in and out of me. Bringing bringing everything that it has for my life, for others. Believe in God that you are going to thrive, not just survive, but you're going to thrive in His presence. That wherever you may go, whether it's in your church, your ministries, your workplace that he gives you the opportunity to fish for men and people that he gives you the opportunity and says I will bring the fish to you he's making you Come back to the river, Banks. And I would say the same thing to you today. Son of man, son of woman, daughter of man, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see in India? What do you see in Hyderabad or wherever you're from, Chennai, Kerala? What do you see? Do 
you see in the heart of Jesus is all kinds of fish. I pray this in Jesus' name that he gives you the fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit to be manifested in your life. Not just today, not just for tonight. It's not a feel good moment. It's a transformation. Because when Ezekiel came back to the river banks, he said, I see trees. I see fishermen. And I see many kinds of fish in the river. Deeper life begins in the river. Deeper life begins in the presence of God. You and the presence of God are inseparable. The temple and his presence is inseparable. So Father, I declare, O oh God, in this, that I hear this morning that the love of Jesus, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit, the, all the authority that you've given God for them to be prosperous have good success because they are rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus and they will succeed they will speak of your goodness Amen. and testify of your love yes. that all may know because the desire of your heart is that all may know that none should perish yes. that all will hear of your word and then the end will come so God I pray in the name of Jesus Christ the infilling of your power of the Holy Spirit be manifested in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.